you to be with us at the time that we give a word about your love your grace and your mercy move me out of the way and you come forward Lord as I begin this time of worship through the sermon bless those who hear and may it move them in a way that they reassess what they're not doing and reassess what they're doing but I ask, Lord, for a blessing of all the hearers today as we listen to your word. And we thank you in advance for your delivery of it. Amen and amen. I want us to think together on this subject, the sinful heart. The sinful heart. And join me at this time with a reading from the book of Psalm, chapter 14, verses 1 through 5. The book of Psalm, chapter 14, verses 1 through 5. The fools say in their hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on humankind to see if there are any who are wise who seek after God. They have all gone astray. They are all like perverse. There is no one who does good. No, not one. There they shall be in great terror, for God is with the company of the righteous. The word of the Lord, again, for the people of God, may you hear with new ears, may you hear with new hearts. The sinful heart. You know, sin is prevalent with us always has been from the beginning and is now and I implore you to listen to what your heart is doing right now as I speak these words about the sinful heart in the book of Matthew chapter 5 through 8 Jesus is in the temple and he's with his disciples and he is giving his sermon his first sermon in Matthew, which is the Beatitudes. And in this, he's stating that blessed are the pure in heart. He said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they are the ones that will see God. That is those people who are sincere in their heart. The heart, you know, that little physical organ about the size of a person's fist is very, very important. For the heart beats for us. But the heart is also the center of feelings. Yes, the heart is not only continually circulating life-giving blood throughout our bodies, but it is the seat of our spiritual life. The heart is a seat of our spiritual life, y'all. And the Holy Scriptures teaches us that the wise men of the Old Testament declared this. They declared that 
as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. For whether a person is sincere, wholesome, and pure is determined by their heart, which is determined by a person's thoughts, by a person's motions, emotions, desires, and purpose. So the word of God condemns a person on the condition of their heart. Your heart can condemn you if it's not in the right condition. It is based on what a person thinks. So the Bible teaches us that whosoever hate his brother is a murderer. And you don't have to kill that person physically. You do it with your heart. And so the heart is very important. It also says in the Bible that whosoever lusts in their heart has already committed adultery. So God's word declares that out of the heart comes the issues of life. God declared in the day of Noah, Noah even, that the imaginations of man's heart is evil from his youth. And Jesus said that from within, out of the heart, proceed evil thoughts, adulterers, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, an evil eye, blasphemy, and even abusing the name of God. These things are important. Abusing the name of God is blasphemy, and it is to be a sacred thing that we do not do this. Then we have pride. We have foolishness. All of these evil things come from within the heart. David told us in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 17, David said to the people that God searched the heart and takes pleasure in the uprightness of the heart. And David further said, as for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things. And now I have seen with joy your people who are present here to offer freely and joyously to you the things that belong to you. He said further, oh, that we were here today, we would willingly offer all unto God with a pure heart. So today I'm asking you to redirect or direct your heart towards God. If we would all determine that we want to be a Christian in our hearts, what pleasure would reach the very seat of God in heaven if we would give him our heart and turn our hearts to him. The Bible tells us that humans look at the outward appearance. Humans do this often, as we know. They size us up by what we wear. They look at us and sum us up just by our appearance. But I need to remind you that God looks at the heart. That's the seed of life, the center of our feelings. And yes, the heart 
is the person. Can't beat without a heart. We can't live without our heart. And we can't have the right feelings and emotions towards God without a good, pure, spiritual heart. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said this, Blessed are the pure in heart. But I know we all ask ourselves, because when we hear that word pure, who, how can we obtain this? Because not many of us can truly say that we are pure in heart. But who is really pure in heart? We know that Jesus was the only one that lived on this earth and it is in our hearts and in this world and in our life and in this century and in this eternity that we live towards is the only one that's pure in heart. So there were, in the Bible, the story that reminds us so often of how we can look at this thing. And that was the time that Jesus was on the cross. And on that cross, there were two people one on his right and one on his left. I want us to revisit that because it, it tells us how this heart is of ours. Of the three that were to be crucified on that cross, at Calvary, we know who the pure in heart was. Jesus Christ, who was hanging in the middle of that three-centered cross that people glared at and stared at and yelled at and talked at that day in so many different varieties of ways. Jesus hanging on the middle of that cross in the center was the one we can all agree with was pure in heart. For the testimony of the sacred writings of the word of God, of the scriptures we read, attest to this fact, both in the Old and the New Testament, is that in him is no sin. In him was no sin. And we know that he was the sinless person up on that cross. But church, I want you to listen. Was it by chance that Jesus would be crucified at the same time with two known thieves? Is that by chance? that these two people were to be crucified? Both of them were thieves. Both of them did not have pure hearts. Both of them were there. But here we are. They were going to be crucified. And it was not by happenstance that they were two thieves. This was by divine design. If you know your scriptures and you go back and look at it, Isaiah prophesied long ago. He foretold that our Lord would be numbered with the transgressors. He had two transgressors, sinners, on both sides of him. Think about it. Why was he to die in the first place? Why was he on that cross in the first place? We've heard the stories, but I want you to focus in on these two sinners today, those who with sinful hearts, who violated God's law, was on each side of him. Isaiah declared that the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, took upon himself the sins of all people, of all the world, past, present, and future. He died on Calvary's cross between the two thieves. But now I want you to look, the thief on the left, out of the wickedness of his sinful heart, Remember the words that he said, because he remained cold-hearted, heartless, to be a sinner to the very end. 
he cursed God. He blasphemed God to the last, revealing the sinfulness of his heart. For he reviled Jesus with abusive, sarcastic words, mocking him, saying, if you be Christ, save yourself and not us. And I want you to know that there's still many people like this. Many people like this person today, hard-hearted and cold. Despite what they have heard, what we have tried to tell them and, and, and seek them to know this God, they still turn away from him and rebuke him. So, sisters and brothers, with such mocking words on his lips, he went to his frightful, faithful reward to hell. He went to an inter eternal punishment of the unrepentant, rebellious sinner. And that is what will happen to all. Some people don't even believe in hell anymore, let alone don't believe in God. Some people will say, we got enough of hell right here on earth, but there will be nothing like eternal hell, I promise you. Now let's look at the thief on the right. Okay, he's with these, 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 this, he heard the same sinful evil heart from which came the promptings of his. And he knew that both of them had led the life of crime for which they had been sentenced to die. But this other person, in his heart, a big change took place. He looked at this man who had not sinned, who had done nothing but help people, who had done nothing but give people what they needed. He looked at this person who was pure in heart, who looked like he had nothing but love in his eyes towards him. He had a change of heart. He was converted in the 11th hour for he rebuked his partner in crime, saying, what's the matter with you, man? Don't you hear? Don't you fear? Don't you see that you are in the same condemnation? You are about to be crucified. Don't you see what's happening here? Those people on the ground don't care about you. We are about to be crucified. Don't you get it? So this person had a change of heart. And he said, you know, we deserve what we get, but not this man, not this person. What we have done for our sinful deeds merits this. But this man has done nothing. And then turning with his head and his heart toward Jesus, right there in the center of the cross, this thief pleaded, Lord, will you remember me when you come into your kingdom? This, I tell you, was a person's transformation when he asked God to take him into his kingdom. He said, I believe. I believe that you are who you say you are. What a conversion. A sinful heart that had manifested in itself a life of gross sin and shame is now cleansed and made pure. Now some of you may ask how this is possible. And scripture tells us 
that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us all from our sin. He cleanses us all from our sins. Even those of us who sin, because we sin from time to time, and some of us may sin every day. Even though we believe in him and we are Christians and we have accepted him as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, God knows our hearts. And he, I want you to hear this, brothers and sisters, this is the one thing that I have termed this, he has divine detergent divine detergent that can make an evil sinful heart pure and we can thank him every day of our life that there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and that sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains all their guilty, guilty stains, stains are, are made clean through the blood of Jesus Christ. Not from our own worth, not from our own efforts, but we are cleansed by the blood. And so today, that is what happened to the repentant thief on the cross. His heart was made pure by the blood of Jesus. And now, he hears from the lips of Christ a gracious, merciful answer to his cry. For our Lord said unto him, Verily I say unto you this day, you shall be with me in paradise. And this thief experienced a literal fulfillment of the Beatitudes. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. They shall see God. For the pure in heart can see what others cannot see. For their vision is no longer impaired by an evil, sinful heart. But those devoted to sin cannot see God. They just don't get it. They walk like blind people. Sin, you see, causes spiritual blindness. Yet the heart can be made pure by the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ, then you can see Jesus. Jesus died a cruel death, suffering unjustly, crucified, dying a cruel and vicious death on a cross for us. Those of us who see God can see his love. They can see his mercy. They can see his sacrifice. They can see and have his mercy. What glorious visions of faith are open to the eyes who are pure in heart. And even more, we have glorious blessings that await those whose hearts have been made pure by the blood of the Lamb. For in heaven, they will see God face to face. It was the heart of Job that caused him in the midst of his tragedy to understand that I know my Redeemer lives. Job could truly say, though my body may be destroyed, I shall see God. My eyes will behold him and no others, no matter what happens to me. So I ask you today in closing, my friends, can you see God? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I once was lost, but now I'm fine, found. I was blind, but now I see. It was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed? I ask you all to believe because your heart can be changed. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word will never pass. Believe on the Lord and you shall be saved. Your enemy, Satan, has blinded so many to the simplicity of this salvation. And he has put into the human heart that people must do something 
in order to be saved. Like the thief on the cross who chose to believe Jesus as the son of God, faith is the answer. Some see faith as praying or working or feeling or other things that have to do with a person's efforts and emotions. But John in our scripture tells us this. If you acknowledge in your heart that you are a sinner and know in your heart that you want to be saved, you will be saved. Romans 10, 13 says this. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For by grace you are saved. It is a gift of God. Nothing added, nothing taken away. Receive it by faith. Believe the word. Faith is believing. He will do what he says he will do. Believe on the name of the Son of God and that will settle it. So with your whole heart, I implore you today to seek him. Come to him and seek him. Do not harden your heart because if you search with all your heart, you will find him. I ask you to think on these words and realize the wonderful blessing you have when you have a pure heart and believe in God. Blessed be to God for all he is and all he will be. Amen. May we stand for our benediction and ask God to give you a clean heart. There is a fountain filled with blood. There is a fountain filled with love for you.